It's a foggy morning here in the mountains of southern Appalachia. There's a real feeling of fall. Every day it's a little bit more. It's not fall of the year yet, but you can definitely tell it's on the way. There's a couple, besides just the general feeling, there's a couple of different signs too. There's a few leaves here and there turning slightly, especially the ones that have already fallen on the ground. If you look behind me, you can see that long line of Joe Pie Weed, Queen of the Meadow, Queen of the Meadow. That's a sure sign fall's coming. I've noticed ironweed blooming already. I'll show you some of it. We've got some in the front yard. Beautiful, beautiful purple blooms. And if I, I'll be quiet for a minute and let you listen. I know you can hear them too, the crickets, that's another sign. All the, all the insects, uh, we're still hearing katydids at night, but you can tell they're kind of on their way out. They're, they're decreasing in that wonderful strength they had at the beginning and middle of August. Every year all through the garden, I have favorite little places that I love to look at, and I think that's so pretty. I always share them with you in my garden, gardening videos. And the one right now that's my favorite is this view behind me. I have those wonderful Joe Pie weeds, Queen of the Meadow, then this lush, lush herb bed that's just been so pretty this year. There's still some hyssop blooming with the purple. And then kind of in the distance, you can see up against the, hugged up against the greenhouse, is that beautiful colas that I got from the Satterfields early, early in the spring. Uh, it's just, it's really tall. It's so tall it's about to fall over, but it just gives the such a pop of color right there. And when I stand outside my kitchen door there on my little deck, I can look back this way and it's just so, so lovely. It's my, my favorite view at the moment. Several weeks ago, Matt and I planted some fall things, not many, but a few different things. So I'm gonna take you around and show you those things, how they're doing. They're all doing pretty good, almost all of them. And then also show you what's left from the summer garden. This is more of a close-up view where you can really see the beautiful lavender up there of the queen of the meadow. And then you can see the, the blooms of the hyssops. That has bloomed all summer long and the bees and the butterflies have just adored it. Now it is a medicinal plant, but we've not done anything with it. We've not done anything. But it's supposed to be the, a perennial, so it should come back next year. Now if it does as good next year as it did this year, we may need to move it to a different place than it is right now, but it's so, so pretty. I just love it. There's a couple of things in this herb bed that I think we may need to move. That, really just two things. That and then the lemongrass. Miss Cindy grew lemongrass the whole time she's lived out here and uh, near us once she moved from Black Mountain. And hers never got very large. It just stayed really small. So I bought the lemongrass at the, from the Satterfields too. And after I shared that we planted in here, I think me and Katie did a video where we were planting the herb bed. And I uh, Several people said, you might want to move that because it may get really big. And I thought, well, Miss Cindy's never did. But of course, they were right, and it's got humongous already. So we're going to move it, maybe put it somewhere along here on the bank. Maybe we'll put it just kind of out of the way since it is so big. The same company that we got our um, raised beds from, they also have really interesting, they've got lots of different products, but they've got really interesting ones that are just really big and round. And I'm thinking maybe some of those would be nice, maybe for the hyssop and maybe for the, I'm getting eat, a, eat alive by the little gnats this morning, and maybe also for the lemongrass. So that would kind of keep it contained, but give it plenty of room, plenty of soil. It's a pretty big circle. It's not small. I don't know the exact inches, but pretty big. And that would give it enough room to actually have good root system and all that kind of stuff and thrive, at least for you know, a couple of years, if not several. So I'm thinking that might be what we do with both of those. Another thing we've really enjoyed, we grow every year is our basil in the herb, herb bed. And we just, we dry some of it and then we eat it fresh. Corey wants to make pesto though. That's something I've never made. So we'll see if she, if she does that, that'll be really good. We have plenty. We also had cilantro and um, dill and the dill's gone. We've, we've used all of it and it's kind of died back. And then we also had this year for the first time, we grew fennel and we've not really done anything with it, except I love to come by here and chew on some of it and also uh, just smell it. So hopefully we'll dry some of that before the season's over. Over here under the queen of the meadow, we have wonderful jewelweed. 
Now when Matt and I have lived here for almost 30 years, almost, we did not ever have jewel weed up here. It grows all down at Granny's, down at the creek, all through the mountain holler here, but we didn't have it up here. And about three years ago, I guess, uh, Paul had done some work down at his house and he had extra dirt and I seen it and I said, would you bring that up there to my house and put it, he had a machine so it'd be easy and put it in my raised beds. So he did. Well, what happened the next spring was all over those raised beds, what happened, jewel weed started coming up and because he brought the seeds with him from down there. So I pulled it up. I let some of it that first year actually grow because I was so excited in the garden bed, even though it was in the way. And then once it was through, I threw it all on the bank here and those other ones that I dug up and set on the bank. And some of those died, you know, from transplanting them, but, but two or three of them lived. And so I got this beautiful start of jewel weed up here that we've never had before. And it's just lovely. And I'm going to show you one of the easy ways that it spreads on its own. So you can see the beautiful blooms. Pitcher, most people say they look like a pitcher that would pour out something. You can see the different little colors of orange freckles. It's kind of orange and then got orange, deeper orange, reddish freckles. A really, really beautiful bloom. There's also a variety that's yellow, just solid yellow, but we don't have any of that here in, in my mountain hauler. So this is the seed pod, and this is how they propagate their self easily. All you gotta do is touch it, and it it just explodes, and it's throwing the seeds down. Let's see if we can find another one. So you can see that one, and see what happens when I touch it. It just pops, comes apart. So when I was a girl, I would take and I would babysit. This was, and it was in the summer. This is, will entertain kids forever, as long as you're willing to stand there, to let them find those little pods like that and then touch them and let them explode. And this plant, in addition to being called jewelweed, is called wild touch me not. Well, touch me not, because once you touch it, it just explodes like that. I'm so happy to have it growing up here at my house. On this cattle panel arch that Matt made in these two beds, we've already pulled out. We mostly had cucumbers and we've done pulled them out. They're gone. But what we have left is some pepper plants. Our peppers didn't do as good as usual, but you can see there's some, that's cayenne. They're finally turning red. And down here on the end, we have some. This is Marconi, a Marconi pepper. So we've been enjoying peppers. We've just not grown as many as we usually do. We purposely tried to plant some weeds this year, what people would call weeds, just wild plants. And this is one of them so that we could use it for medicinal uh, purposes if it, if it grows and spreads. So this is mullein, really soft, beautiful, beautiful plant. And they have grown, so I hope that they'll, that by next year, they'll even, you know, they'll do better. They didn't actually grow their stalk or bloom. They look like they're trying down there, but I'm hopeful that this will come back and then we'll have a start of mullein. And it does grow wild. I see it all over the, the roadsides as I go to and fro. There's just not any growing right here in my mountain holler. We've pulled up all of our tommy toes in our main bed, but we still have some here and there growing. This one is called Matt's Cherry and it just reseeds itself every year. It's a really sweet, sweet tomato, a really good one. It's just very small. The grow bags that we have right beside the greenhouse that had the tomatoes in them earlier this year, we've pulled up all the tomatoes and that's where we planted a lot of our fall things. In this one, we have some kale. You can see right there, there is several plants, but it's not, not doing really good yet. I hope it will once cooler weather really gets in here. In this one, we have turnips, which you can see how good they're doing. They definitely need to be thinned. I need to be eating some turnip greens. And this one is more kale, although it didn't come up as good. I see two, three, maybe about four plants, not as good as the other one and very small. In the same bed, we do have some purslane growing, so that's definitely edible too. I have a, a video or two about purslane. I'll link to those if you've never eaten that. And it's a weed, but it's, it's a tasty weed. We also have kale in this one, and you can see it really is doing way, way better, except it's got some bug damage. Got some bug damage back there on those leaves. 
ones in the front look a lot better. I need to come out here and put some, I've heard people say they've been using flour, like um, just plain flour that you'd cook with, or cornmeal. I need to try one of those and see if it helps with my bug issue. But this kale is really doing good. This grow bag is the fullest by far, and it again is turnips. So should at least have some turnips and we should have a lot of greens to eat. And then in this very last one, I have, I don't know, about 10 beets, beets that come up. This is the first time I've ever tried to plant beets in the fall. Although I do see some little bitty ones coming up right there. So I might get enough beets to have for supper one night if they continue to grow. This is our massive arch of Malabar spinach. You can see it does this every year. It just completely covers itself. So we've been enjoying creamed spinach and spinach and salads. Um, it's really tasty, and I love that since I started growing it, I've never had to plant it again. It just comes back every year. But also, in the middle of all of it, so there's a, this is kind of a representation of it. This is Malabar spinach there, and this is wild apricot or maypops. Katie has them planted here. And this year, I can look around, and there's, there's probably 25 or 30 little fruits here. So I'm hopeful that Katie might make us some jelly. She made some one year. It was good. You can use it to drink for, to make a drink. It's in mine and Jim Cassidy's uh, cookbook. The recipe for that is. And also, you can just eat them. Just pull them apart and eat them. Now, it's not a substantial meal if you're going to eat one of them. Not like even eating an apple. But it is sweet. A sweet taste. And some people say it's more like a tropical. Think of pineapple. Other people say more like a lemon. So you just have to divide or decide for yourself. But you can't, like right now, they're still really firm. They're not ripe. You have to wait for them to get really, really soft before you harvest them. These two grow bags right here, we had potatoes in. Potatoes done good for us this year. Uh, we can never manage to grow enough to make it all through the winter, but we did grow some nice potatoes. But what's happened over the summer, we have strawberries in this green stalk all the way up. And they've their little runners have come out and sewed themselves into the grow bag. So now I have strawberries growing in them so next year it'll be hard to decide whether to pull up the strawberries for to plant more potatoes or just let the strawberries go we'll probably just let the strawberries go in some of my other videos i've talked about this beautiful anemone september charm it's just lovely i've had it for 15 years at least if not longer and it just decided in the last two years to take over so matt and i are going to try to remove it from this bed this winter that'd be one of our chores for winter and put it on the bank but isn't it lovely it's just so pretty and the only reason we want to remove it is that all the other stuff i've planted in there can't really grow because of it it's just so rampant it is beautiful though and it is september and it's just in full bloom so you can see why they named it september charm down here in our lower garden we still have a lot going on we're still the okery still needing to be cut every day. It's still going really good. This is the weather that it loves, the hot humidity. And then behind me over there, the green beans, they're still producing. I noticed yesterday we have quite a few. I think what Matt and I have decided to do on those, though, rattlesnake beans, that's what they are. And people grow them to eat fresh like we've done all summer, to can, to put up, to preserve, make leather bridges, whatever you want to do with them. But they also grow them to shell out and use as dried beans. And Matt and I have never, ever done that. Never. But we're going to, those that are on there, we're going to leave them. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave them till they dry out kind of on the, on the plant. And then we're going to pick them all. And then we're going to shell them out. And we're going to see how we like using them for dried beans. In this bare area right here, Matt and I have planted about four rows of little green onions, little onions, and we'll just use them as green onions. We won't likely let them grow all winter. They'll probably be gone pretty quick. But so far, they're only about that big, so they're going to have to get a little bit bigger. So this is the beautiful ironweed that I was talking about that grows wild. Isn't it just a beautiful, beautiful color? I always think of it this time of the year when I'm driving to and fro on the mountain roads and I see it growing alongside the roads. I think of it like a purple robe of fall. It's like the mountains take on that beautiful, beautiful color. Sometimes you'll see a whole field of it and that is especially pretty. I was checking the winter squash down here to see if there was any of them that's ready to be harvested and there is. We just wait till the stem dries up and almost falls off of them before we take them 
um, from the field or from the from the garden area but I was finding a lot of ground cherries ground cherries and once you have them they reseed themselves and they just come back every year and they grow in this little kind of a little paper lantern looking thing and then you open that up and then inside is the the ground cherry I love them I love to eat them I think they're really good so I've been having a little snack but I'm the only person in my family that likes them. Matt and the girls like them. I don't know about Austin. We'll have to get him to taste one, see if he likes it. But they, you can do things with them. You can make sauces and jellies and pies. But most of the time, I just eat them like this. I've only, the only thing really I've tried to make was a pie, and I just wasn't crazy about it. It, it was pretty good if you'd never had any kind of other pie, but it wasn't wasn't all that but I do love to eat them when I'm out in the garden this was the late squash that I planted since our first didn't do any good and it has been producing for us you can see there's a there's a little one and there's a few more blooms so maybe we'll have a, a couple of more squash from this plant this is some of the Egyptian onions that I moved up here. They are growing. They've not really bloomed yet, but I hope they'll, I'm gonna leave them right here and I hope they'll just completely take over this bed. Something that we enjoy during the winter, but the place that we have them growing just isn't the best place. So I think this would be much better up here out of the way. And this raised bed is also some of the second planting of squash and zucchini. I think one zucchini and then the other two plants are squash and they've been producing. So I think I've got two squash or two zucchini and then several little squash off of the two squash plants. So we finally did get some squash and zucchini. It just took all summer. In this raised bed up on the bank, we put some of our fall things. So that's a row of turnips. They don't look as good as the ones in the back. And then back there in the back is a few more beets. I planted a row of beets and I think I see three, exactly three. No, maybe four, five, six, a few more. Anyway, not sure they'll make anything, but I'm, I think the turnips will. So in this raised bed, it's looking, looking really good. On this end, we have mustard, mustard greens. And then on this end, we have rutabagas. Matt and I have never grown a rutabaga, but maybe this will be the year. You can see I do have some bug damage in this one too though. So maybe I'll dust it with flour and cornmeal and see if that helps. This is our bed of Mississippi pink eye peas and we have really, really enjoyed them. Me and Matt just love them. I see some new blooms on them here. So maybe we'll have a few more peas before cold weather gets here. I hope you enjoyed seeing how our fall garden is doing and seeing how our summer garden, the things that are left, how they're doing too. I'm really excited about those fall things. Last year, by the time our fall things were about the size they are now, one night deer ate it all, ate them all in one night. They were just gone, completely wiped out. So I'm really thankful that hadn't happened yet this year and I hope that it doesn't because I really want some turnips and maybe rutabagas for the first time. Excited about those green onions that'll freshen up all of our suppers as we eat them. So really exciting. Of course, I always love the kale and the uh, mustard greens and things like that it makes me think of those fall days and being able to go out and, and pick something green from the garden even though the rest of it is gone. I also enjoy fall of the year, all, all through the year, but I especially think I notice it more in the fall because of things that are died out, like our tomatoes are mostly gone. There's just not as much pressure in the garden with things growing. The cucumbers are gone those things so you notice the wild things more so I love you know the joe pie weed the jewel weed the beautiful iron weed that hugs the roads that I drive on and surrounds my mountain home too I really love those things and it's wonderful when you can notice them enough to and then learn about them I wish I knew more I certainly don't I'm not a person that knows a lot about medicinal things but I, I want to know more that's one of my goals but when you know things like the jewel weed that that really can benefit you that the mullein can benefit you that's wonderful wonderful knowledge to have I hope to learn more about that in the future
there's a real joy for me to notice the things. I'm so blessed to live in Appalachia, in southern Appalachia here, where there's four really distinct seasons. They're really distinct. It's such a blessing to live in a place like that. And it really makes you feel I, I, close to the land, I guess is a good way to say it, but to me, brings an inner joy to notice those things, like to notice those first spring flowers uh, in early spring, maybe it's bloodroot, all those things, to notice the first little green leaves unfurling on the trees. And then, of course, summer has a beauty, too, of itself. You think about the wildflowers, the flocks that grows wild in the summer, uh, those beautiful leaves as they're fully unfurled, and the green is so bright and they look so soft. Just beautifulness. All the, I think of all the summer wildflowers that grow wild and all the beauty of seeing them. And then even fall, as we're going into fall of the year here, now this is the first of September, and you got the beautiful ironweed and the joe pie weed, queen of the meadow, queen of the matter, whichever one you want to call it. Just so many, so many beautiful things. It's, it's a real joy to notice them and really embrace them. I think that for me, Pap taught me this, to be grateful for the little things. And of course that's in daily life, whether you're grateful for your, the food you eat, you know, you've got a place to lay your head at night clothes on your back, all those things, but also noticing the little things in nature really brings a joy to my heart, and I think it will yours too if you're not someone that notices it, whether it's a, a bird flying by the window, a little, little bug crawling by, maybe it's a beautiful wildflower in your area. I think that's really, really brings joy to your heart if you'll try to focus on those things. I try to do that. I'm glad that Pop, Pap taught me that. And Granny always noticed the beauty, too, so I really am grateful. That's one of the best things they both taught me as I was growing up here in the mountains of Appalachia. I'm always grateful when you stop by to visit with me. I hope you enjoyed this garden tour, and I hope you'll stick around to view the next one. And maybe by then we'll have some, have some little turnips to show you.